Okay, welcome back. We've got lecture 6.2 here for section 6.2 in your book. Um, this involves with classifying the elements. So, the first thing we're going to study are the squares within the periodic table. And we start with there being 111 elements or boxes on the periodic table. That is going to increase as we go on. Um, there are rumors that there may even be uh, more than 111. There might, we might actually have 114 with 112, 114, 116, and 118 on their way. Um, however, they are organized into periods, and the periods are the horizontal rows across the periodic table. Now, you guys might also know that these horizontal rows are associated, okay, they're associated with the energy levels. Okay. They're associated with the energy, with the with the uh, principal energy levels of the uh, electron configuration. So the first period has two elements, you know, the one s two elements. Okay, periods two and three each have eight, so that's you know two s two two p six and three s two three p six, and so on. And then there's the eighteen elements and thirty two elements. Period seven would have another thirty two, and then we you know and, and so on. Um, now, these have particular names to them, and you guys are going to need to memorize these, and we'll have a, a uh, I have a pretty cool uh, memorization tool for this, and you guys will all remember what they are when we're done, when we're done with it. Um, however, we do want you to show the things that can be included in a periodic table, okay, and that is, sorry about that. That is this right here. So we're going to look at that and okay. And this is our example of one of the squares in the periodic table. Okay, it had we've talked about this before, but this number here is the atomic number. This is our element symbol. It'll have an element name and an average atomic mass. Okay. This is not, please remember, this average atomic mass is not the mass number. It is the weighted average of all of the isotopes of this particular element. The other thing I want you to notice is that when you see an element symbol, it has, when it has more than one letter, the second letter is always lowercase. So when we are writing our formulas, and we talk about our names and our the names of our formulas and that sort of thing, we have... The way you can tell that you start a new element is it has a new capital letter. Okay, and the way you can tell that you haven't finished the symbol for the element is if it has a lowercase letter. So that would still be, the second letter would also still be part of the element symbol. Okay, you are going to be expected to memorize the element symbols and the element names. or You'll, you'll have to memorize, memorize about 40 of them. And uh, not the whole thing. Okay, but a good 40 of them, the 40 most common ones, uh, in particular the ones where the names do not match the symbols. And I will let you know about uh, two weeks ahead of time when you know, have that, have, need to have that memorized. Okay, so we get rid of that. And then we get into the labeling and naming of the groups. So, we have groups or families, which are the vertical columns on the periodic table. Okay, and they're elements with similar physical and chemical properties. Now, the group A elements are known as the representative elements. And I'm going to show you what we mean by the group A elements here in a moment. Okay, the group A elements are the ones, we'll drag them over here. They're the ones that are, move that to the front here, sorry. Those are the ones you see where it says 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, 8A. Those are the group A elements. Okay, They are also known as the representative elements. Now, the group A ones in the S block, so these guys right, these guys right here, this is the group A, group 1A, they're in the S block. Those are going to be called 
Those are going to be called the alkali metal. All of them except for hydrogen. Hydrogen, it has been found that hydrogen does conduct electricity when it takes a metallic form. And it takes a very momentary metallic form uh, when it is super compressed. However, uh, for all intents and purposes, it is just a gas and it is not, not, it is not a metal. Uh, so the first row is the, are the alkali metals. Sorry, the first column are the alkali metals. That is group 1A. Group 2A are the alkaline earth metals. Two different names. Okay, the, the S1, the S1 group are the alkali metals. The S2 group, in fact, let's write them in there. 1A, the S, S block, S1 are the alkali metals. The S2 are the alkaline earth metals. Now, over in the other side, over in the P block, over in the P block, go top, your top layer. Okay, over here in the P block, which are these guys over here, column three is going to be these guys. It's going to be the P the the S2P1s, or just the P1 block, and the P2s, and the P3s. Okay. The group 3 is the boron family, so that's the S2P1, which is where it gets the 3, the 3 electrons, that's the boron family. Okay. The group 4 would be the carbon family, and those guys are the s 2 p Two, okay. and then we go on on the next page. Okay, then we have the group five, which is the S two P three, and th that would be the nitrogen family. Then the next one, the group six, would be the oxygen family. Yeah, you guys are on a roll there. Okay, so that would be S2P4. Group 7 would be the fluorine family? No, it is not. They are called the halogens. Okay, they are the halogens. They are, uh, this is the same gas that you will find in the fluorescent lights above your head. And in head, halogen headlamps, in some other lamps that you have probably in your home. And, th and those are the S2, S2, oh, that's ugly. Those are the S2, P5. And then as we finish with the S2, P6, notice that the entire S and P orbitals are filled. This is a very important distinction. The S orbital and the P orbital, which are the highest energy level orbitals at any given time when the highest level the highest energy level orbitals are filled we have noble gases this is very important because all elements want their uh want their electron configurations filled they all want this s2p6 configuration which brings us to the electron configurations in these groups okay the periodic number describes the number of principal energy levels. Okay, we've talked about that from the last period, from the last lecture. Okay. The outer energy of level electrons are what determine the chemical nature of an element. And these are known as the valence electrons. These include the S and P electrons from the same outer energy level. So... Let's talk about this for a second. So when we look at a noble gas, we notice that these guys over here. Helium has a... Helium has a 1s2 configuration up here. Now, it is completely filled. There, it has the, all of the electrons in its highest possible energy level, which is that 1s2. Now, this neon here is going to do the same thing. It is going to be... 2s2. Here, let me give some room here. Yeah, I had to rearrange it a little bit. Neon here is going to be 2s2, 
2p6, but it also includes that 1s2. I mean, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. But the 2s2, 2p6, this is the highest energy level electrons that it has, and it's got all eight of them. And so that would make this a noble gas. Argon is going to be pretty much the same thing. It's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and once again, the highest energy sublevels are filled, the 3s2 and the 3p6. Now take a look at krypton. Krypton is going to start way over here. With We're going to have the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Then we're going to have potassium over here at 4s1, 4s2. And so we'll have a 4s2 in there, 4s2. And then we have the 3d10. d10. Now you may notice that the entire third energy level is now filled, but it is not the highest energy level because the highest energy level is the fourth. That's going to bring, then we'll finish with 4p6. And so this krypton right here with the 4s2, 4p6 now has the highest energy sublevel filled, and that's what makes it a noble gas. So it fills up the s's and the P's in order for it to be a noble gas. All right, now the electrons in the group or family okay, are similar in their properties because they have similar valence electrons in their configuration. And those S and P electrons are the valence electrons. Now, this brings us to the transition elements. These are known as the group B elements, or known as the D block and F block elements. So, groups 1B through 8B are the transition metals, and look at that. It's 1B over here, 2B, or not to be. <laughs> no, 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B, 6B, 7B, 8B. All of those are 8B, and they're kind of funky in here. Okay, those are the transition metals. And inside these guys, the f blocks, these are the inner transition metals. These are the ones that are inside the, the D block. So these are the inner transition metals. These are the transition metals. Alkali metals. Rare, uh, 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 alkaline earth metals halogens, noble gases. Okay. The four F elements okay, are known as the lanthanide series, also known as the rare earth elements. They are very rare, and they burst into flames when you heat them. Really pretty cool. Okay. The five F elements are called the actinide series. Okay. And the elements greater than 93 are the transuranic elements, or the transuranium elements. Trans, transuranium elements. They do not occur in nature. They are all man-made, and the largest, natu the largest naturally occurring nucleus is the uranium Nucleus. That is the largest one we have. Okay. So, what you should be able to answer now are, what are the four classes that elements can be sorted into based on their electron, electron configurations? Okay. And you just read through those, and we just talked about the four basic kinds of elements that we can sort them into. Okay. So that is the end of section 6.2, and your homework now is for tonight is going to be page 167, numbers 10 through 15, and if you look closely, you may have already seen some of your homework questions written into the notes. So, uh, that is it for section 6.2, and let's get that homework done. It's only six questions. Let's knock that out, and we'll see you next time.